Good morning and welcome. Good Announcements. Richard? Next Saturday <laughs> is the Polar Plunge. And your pastor is really excited about being able to jump into the river. But she has a concern. The concern is that the mild weather we've been having lately is going to diminish her experience. <laughs> so she wants you all to pray that next Saturday morning it is cold, blustery, raining, snowing, sleeting, so that she can have the full polar plunge experience. Thank you for helping to make her dreams come true. Amy. We did the Neighborhood Academy last Monday, and all went well with that. And we had a right. We had a hundred. Uh, we prepared for a hundred, so that was that was the top number we've ever done in there. So that was great. Yeah. And don't forget Ash Wednesday. Is this Wednesday? Yes. Is this here. Wednesday here at our church at seven seven o'clock? And we we'll, we'll, we do that in conjunction with Westminster. Yes. So we have to have more people here than they do. Yes. <laughs> Nancy. Out, Nancy. After church, if you have a few minutes, please stay. We'd like to discuss what we're going to do for Julia's coordination. Uh, we need to kind of play a luncheon. And also, I'm taking funds. We're going to be getting her a stall for a present. It'll go towards luncheon because we will need help with that also. And the meeting won't last long. It's, it'll it's just fast. be, it, yeah, it's just a matter of deciding what we're going to have and that's all we have to do, so. Okay, now after, after church, um, for fellowship, it's a, called a king's cake. And the tradition was brought by the French to New Orleans in the 1870s. I think it originated in England with the Epiphany, but for some reason over the years, like hundreds, uh, it got to France and they brought it to New Orleans. And the idea behind it is that it, it has icing on it, any, any kind of a cake would do, and it has icing on it, and then it has sprinkles. And the green sprinkles are for faith, the purple are for power, and the yellow are for justice, is for justice. So that's kind of what, if you see this odd cake back there, that's what it's about. And it should have a little baby in it. So be a, be a little cautious. <laughs> and because it's, a, it's only about that big. And the baby is for luck and prosperity, is what it's supposed to mean. I won't, we won't do this, but as it used to be that if you got it last year, got it the year, then the next year you had to prepare the cake, and that's why I'm here. <laughs> but we, we, won't hold, we won't hold you to that. Okay, I leave you with this little thought. Life is better when you cry a little, laugh a lot, 
and are thankful to God for everything you've got. Let us prepare to worship God. be with you. I invite you to share your sign of God's peace. And now for those who are able, we invite you to stand and join with us and change my heart. to worship and to be surrounded by Christ's presence. We seek witnesses of Christ's holiness and love. Jesus is so close and so successful. As we worship, God brings us to the mountaintop. And then last week, what did we do last week? Do you remember? 
It's okay, I don't either. All right, so, but we talked about kindness. <laughs> it's been a long week. So this week is our last week of kindness, and I have an activity for you guys to do today. But first of all, I want to read this Bible verse, and this is where my lesson is coming from today. This is from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. And it says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, and that it may benefit those who listen. All right? So have you ever heard the saying, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all? Yes. yes. Do you follow that rule? <laughs> not really. It's hard. It's hard not to say things that are unkind, right? It's almost like we have to tell our brains, we can't say that, we can't say that, we got to put a hand over our mouth, right? It's hard, right? And we see kids in school that are doing things and we think it's not okay and we say something about it that might not be kind. So today I have a paper plate and I have my favorite toothpaste, all right, minty fresh, all right? And what I want you to do is I want you to squirt as much toothpaste as you want onto this plate. Now make sure that everybody else, so don't use the whole thing. Go for it. Come on, muscles, let's go. There you go. Whenever you want, you can pass it to somebody else and the next person's gonna go, okay? All right, pass it to the next person. Make sure everybody gets a turn. Okay? 
All right, well, thank you for joining me. Hang on, we're not done yet, sit down. We're not done yet, we still gotta say our prayer, but I wanna thank you guys for joining me for our kindness lessons this month. And remember that even though February is kindness month, we should be kind all the time. So I'm challenging you guys for the rest of February and for the rest of the school year and for the rest of your lives that you're going to be kind and every time that you say something, it's something kind, something nice to somebody else. Think you can do it? No. I know you can do it. I know you can do it. No, we're going to try our hardest, okay? And then I'm going to throw that away. Okay, let's go ahead and pray, okay? All right, here we go. Dear God, thank you for bringing us here today. Help us remember that any unkind words cannot be taken back. Help us to say kind things to everybody. Amen. All right, you may go. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. I invite those who are able to stand and join with me in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Jesus, you invite us to follow you up the mountain, but we are too busy. We ignore opportunities to share glimpses of your kingdom with others. We ask your forgiveness for all our sins. In your name we pray. Amen. We see the light of Christ, for Jesus in all of his glory shines brightly, offering us forgiveness and acceptance. We hear God's voice telling us that we are loved. We belong to God. Amen. You may be seated. Are there those? Let us pray. God, we come before you today to offer you our praise, to offer you our glory. For in the midst of turmoil and unsettled things around us, we have you to hang on to. We can hold on to our faith and know that you are with us. And even things that we don't know what's going to be the outcome or that the outcome has not been good, we know that you are in the midst of it, just holding on to people and giving them strength to carry on in the midst of difficult things. We pray for those that we have mentioned today who are sick and just in need of your healing in any way. For we know that the hospitals are full and so we pray for the doctors and for the nurses and aides and all of those who are caring for those who are sick. For we know it, it's a very huge task and, and when you're inundated it's just hard. And so we pray for the families and for those, all of those in the healthcare um, who work in, in service, that you just give them the strength that they need. We pray for those who have cancer and those undergoing treatments and just for your continued um, strength for those with other long-term illnesses, we lift them up. We pray for those who are living near us who have been dealing with the chemical spill and the uncertainty of what that means um, especially for those who have, were very close to it, um, what that means for their lives, um, and continued watchful of those whose water has been damaged or the air that they breathe. We just um, lift that up. We pray for those in Turkey and Syria, for um, those that have been rescued from the earthquake. We give thanks. For all of those, the 40,000, 45,000 plus, what the numbers are now, who have lost their lives, we just lift them up, their families, as they mourn the terrific loss of not only their villages, their towns, but just the human life and how to even begin to pick up the pieces. Sometimes we don't know God. We continue to look around and see the shootings and, again, the loss of life. And we just pray for our country, our world around. We pray for your love where there is hatred. Where there is hurting, we pray for comfort. 
and be with our governments and our leaders that you will help them as they as they see the the task ahead and that somehow sometimes see unformid seem formidable we thank you god for our savior jesus christ for his love for his teachings that guide us and lead us each and every day we thank we're thankful that you are only a prayer way and that we just can pray and lift up our concerns to you thank you for that presence in our lives we thank you for all that Jesus is and we pray now as he's taught us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. most everybody and um, how many of you are happy that Kansas City won just a few yes well um, last Sunday here was a super Sunday well our super Sunday school and yet it seemed like all around the country the real focus was yes on the Super Bowl and plenty of people, though, um, actually did not watch the game. But I think if you lived in these United States, you knew that there was a Super Bowl happening. Um, so today is the conclusion of our glimpses of the kingdom. And so today, for our Super Sunday, I've added a balloon. And so far, it's been nicely facing you all. I asked it to stay there at the beginning of worship. Now it's going to move a little. You can move back. You can move back. Yeah. There it is. Um, so um, we're going to now, as we finish the, our glimpses of kingdom, the kingdom and the Super Sunday, we're going to read about how our Super Sunday today might compare to last week's Super Bowl Sunday. And our scripture is found in Matthew 17, and I'll begin with verse 1. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and his brother John, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became bright as light. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, is it good for us to be here? If you wish, I will set up three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, this is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they raised their eyes, they saw no one except Jesus himself. 
As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. So Peter took, uh, so Jesus took Peter, James, and John up the mountain for Super Sunday. And that's three people who watched the Transfiguration. Last Sunday, there were at least 113.1 million people who watched the Super Bowl. However, um, and some people watched on national TV, some streamed it. Jesus' transfiguration was covered in three of the four Gospels. So that tells us that it was pretty important, that something important happened on that mountain that day. When we read the stories about Jesus, we read about a humble leader. Um, and not really looking for the spotlight. Not wanting people to share different stuff about him. And yet in this scripture, it seems like Jesus pulls out all of the stops because he's in the spotlight. Um, there was no famous musical singer with him, um, but the light show was spectacular. People filled the seats of the stadium last Sunday with their popcorn and their nachos and their drinks and anticipating a close, exciting football game and a spectacular halftime show. What were Peter, James, and John anticipating as they walked up the mountain and took their seats before Jesus? I don't think they had any idea what was going to happen. And what was it all about? Maybe the first question is really, who was the transfiguration for? Jesus or for the three disciples? Perhaps both. Was it for Jesus who, before the journey, said to the disciples, I must go to Jerusalem, suffer um, much from the elders, the chief priests, the teachers of the law. I'm going to be put to death, but three days later I will be raised to life. Jesus was changed, transformed, right there before the, the three disciples' eyes. And then Moses and Elijah showed up. Were they there for that halftime pep talk? Were they like the coaches who were saying, you know, Jesus, you got this. You know, I know that you're going to be beaten and you're going to have this really terrible time. People are going to yell, crucify him, crucify him. And you're going to be hanging on a cross, agonizing in pain. But you know what? God will be with you and we'll be cheering from on high. We got your back. Remember, you're going to rise again. When Peter, James, and John saw the Super Sunday event on the mountain, they didn't know how to react. How would we react? I have no idea. Then Peter, who always found something to say. Do you know anybody like that who just always has something to say? Maybe good, maybe not so good. Well, Peter holds up his foam finger and he says, Jesus is number one. He's probably got his face painted with Jesus colors, whatever color those are, I'm not sure either. Um, he wants to be part of the action. He wanted to throw this Hail Mary into the end zone, or what he called building tents for the three of them. The tents in the Old Testament were places where that were put up where they believed God resided. And then God's voice boomed over, I would say the crowd, but again, it was only three. But it boomed out. This is my belief. It was a statement of authority. As if the light show wasn't enough. Now we have this interpretation from God. That Jesus is divine. And God, and we're supposed to listen to him. Jesus is the play caller. He's the playmaker. He, when he talks, we're to listen. He belongs to God. And the glory of God cannot be contained in a tent. This was God's moment. This was Jesus' moment to shine like the sun. No, Peter, you can't contain him in this tent. Jesus is going to do his end zone dance, and Peter, James, and John were to stand or fall on their face in awe and wonder. And that's just what they did. And that's what we're to do. When we experience Jesus' glory in our lives, we worship, we praise, we sing. We lift up our hearts in joy, and yes, we even dance. 
So, did any of Super Bowl commercial? Okay, what was yours? The flag. the flag football one? Well, you can guess what mine was. It was the Turbo Tax Safety Dance commercial where this guy is slowly moving around and the Turbo never dreamed of. And when they saw themselves and others through Jesus's, through the artist eyes, he started, they started to become the people that he painted them to be. So today is not Super Bowl Sunday, that's over. It is a Super Sunday though, because Jesus is transformed in front of our very eyes. When we listen to him, we can find ourselves seeing a glimpse of the divinity of the kingdom of God. And that glimpse over empowers us to look at ourselves and others as Jesus does, with eyes of transforming power. A bottle of water at the Super Bowl, $6.50. Peanuts, $7.00. An all beef hot dog, $8. French fries, $9. Nachos, $11. Beer and alcohol, anywhere from $8 to $22.50. Airfare to the Super Bowl and back, $350. A ticket to the game, anywhere between $4,886 to $23,748. You notice none of us went last week. Super Bowl commercials, $7 million per 30 seconds. Seeing Jesus being transformed right here in our lives, in our church, priceless. Amen. Um, <clears throat> we've had a little change. Um, Sue Ann and I are here for representing the choir. So today we're just going to sing together. You're all enlisted in the choir today. Awesome God. dedication for all of our tithes and our offerings. Let us pray. God, we bring our offerings to be used in ministry and not for our glory. We ask you to bless them so that as we come down from the mountain, we can use them to meet the needs we see around us. Amen.
Let us now go forth praising our awesome God. Let us see Jesus in all of his glory. And may we see the Holy Spirit glimpses in our lives this day and this week. Amen.